So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by one of my favourite singers, uh, the beautiful Caro Emerald. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Um, now, I'm such a huge fan, not going to lie, I'm a really Thanks. big fan, but I'd love to know, musically, who influences you, or is there anyone you look up to? Like, Oh, there's so many, you know. Um, well, musically, well, the way we create this music is, in, is very different, I think, than, than uh, what happens usually for artists, you know. Because, of course, I have my influences, but they're more a technical thing. If you really look at the music and the way we put that sound together, it's much more about ambience and atmosphere, yeah. and it's a cinematic thing as well. So there's all kinds of influences going into the music, and either either one of us has different input. You know? yeah. Some of us uh, watch movies a lot, and others really listen to swing band uh, swing bands uh, music like in more instrumental and I'm of course a vocalist so yeah. what I do usually is really listen to um, singers that have this um, this yeah this way of singing that is very uh, imaginative you know yeah. what I really like is uh, for instance like um, Shirley Bassey has that thing she's She's like, the queen, isn't she? I, yeah, really. Like, it's, a, it's a good example. You know, vocally, we're not yeah. like at all. But I take a lot from that sort of thing. Yeah. But what I also like, for instance, is Lily Allen. The way she... She also creates her little uh, ambience in her songs uh, because it, it's completely different lyrics and it's, it's all just very true to the heart, I think. Yeah. But the way she times it, the way she phrases it, it's all very... It sounds very light, but it's not at all. Yeah. You know, and a lot of my songs are like that as well. So whenever I'm in the studio, for instance, I think of that as well. So this is basically how, it, how we layer it. Yeah. Now I love music, and a lot of people's music I kind of just listen to, and it's it's in the background. When any of your tracks come out, I'm finding myself attempting to do the Charleston, the Tango, <laughs> every Strictly Come Dancing dance going. Um, do you kind of watch shows like that or that kind of? Uh, dancing background no, and incorporate that into a song because like, honestly I don't really no. like it either because <laughs> literally when, when I hear your songs I'm like ooh, ooh that man yeah. and I'm really going into it it's, but yeah. I get the same thing yeah. you know especially when I'm on stage I feel like I want to hop around because yeah. that's what the music does to you and to me that's also um, one of the most important ingredients apart from what I just described you know to really get into a scene or some kind of imaginative world I also really really need to be bouncing you know yeah. as, as soon as I hear this idea for a groove and my head starts to bounce that's when I know we have a good <laughs> thing going on you know so yeah that, that's what it does to people I guess because you're also known for putting on um, amazing live shows and with a lot of artists they're, they're brilliant in the studio but on stage not as good however you're just as good on stage as in the studio and you're, you're known for it everyone always talks oh, about great. how good you are live so how do you find putting in that kind of giving the same performance every single show because it can be quite physically challenging as well you're on the stage yeah. there's a lot of lights on you well there's a lot of this is definitely a team effort yeah there's a lot of detail and a lot of thought and effort put into the show in preparing it so when whenever we do a new tour like we're going to do this year um we we think of the show as a whole new chapter you know yeah. in, in our career so we're thinking okay what's 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 the imaginative world we're going to be entering now you know so it starts with that but also with a set list with new music hopefully yeah. um but also with lights and vis visuals so the whole thing becomes one and i think that also really helps to really um get get the whole feeling of, of the album across and apart from that i absolutely need the best musicians to play this you know because it's it's very detailed music some of it is really difficult some of it is easy but that's also difficult because yeah. if somebody is really good musician they eas easily kind of overdo it yeah. you know if you just have to play a, a simple groove and you're going to overdo it by p putting all kinds of fills in it it just destroys the song and this is how we all look at it you know we look at the song and how can we get this across which instruments do we need for this do we need a clar clarinet? Do we need flute? Do we need uh, a string orchestra? You know, because we all can, you know, yeah. play that on <laughs> synthesizers and everything. So it, each song gets his own little world as well. And I really, really like that. And it keeps it interesting for myself as well. 
So what's next for you now? Because um, you well, the success. I was actually reading a, a record that you beat in the Dutch album charts. It was thirty weeks at number one, beating Michael Jackson's yeah. record. That's amazing yeah. record to beat, right? Yeah, Michael Jackson, which means I mean King of Pop. I know, but you know, it's kind of hard for me to even take that seriously. Yeah, that fact, you know. Oh, I would take it seriously. Well, I, I, I'd want a certificate would, for that. <laughs> on my wall. I'd want anything. To I didn't. I didn't. Obviously. Yeah. Well, that's just crazy, isn't it? It's a. And I, what, what's next for you now? Have you got an upcoming album in that uh, you're working on? Well, there's the, the next chapters are one yeah. my big tour in autumn. I'm going to cross the entire... Uh, well, you're at uh, so. Bath, Cardiff, Bournemouth, uh, Brighton, Liverpool, but um, we get a lot of viewers in Cornwall and the South West, and you're actually going to be in Plymouth Pavilions on yeah. October the 27th. Yeah. So do you like going to the South West? Yes. You do? Yes. Have you had a Cornish pasty? Yes, before? of course, yeah, you have. <laughs> many times. I've been there many times, you know. But you? Yeah, it's just really beautiful uh, up there, so down there, I should say. But, um, yeah... Yeah, I love the co- the coastline, you know, yeah. the whole thing. I always I always lo- enjoy being there, yeah. And it's in October, you've got a lot of dates. Um, yeah. And again, that's going to be... I couldn't imagine doing a show night after night after night. Yeah. How do you... Do you prep with that? Do you have a lot of Red Bull just to get your energy? Or do you uh, feed well, off the crowd? Well, that's sometimes a bit difficult, but, uh, you know, I have a lot of experience by now. Yeah. And I know... Well, there's two really, really big things. As I just mentioned, my team, to actually have fun together. Because yeah. they're not just good. They're also really nice people and funny and everything. We have a good time together. Yeah. That's, I think, very important to put on a good show. And the other thing is, I just know that even when I don't feel like doing a show... I know that after, you know, if I enter the stage and I see the people and I know they're enjoying themselves, I will start enjoying myself as well, you know, so yeah. it'll, it's always fine at, at the end of the evening, I come off stage and I'm always feeling good, you know, because my main goal is to have the people up dancing on their chairs, really, and I always succeed, we always succeed, so, yeah. And you're scheduled to perform um, at Quincy Jones' 85th birthday concert I as well. Know. Yeah, now, just from your facial expression, you must be mega excited for that um, right now. Yeah, I'm mega yeah. nervous. Yeah. Is it his first UK appearance ever? Because I I was reading something about that, and if that is, that's amazing. I'm not sure be... about that. I think I read that somewhere. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing to be part of that. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm so so proud. Yeah. So how were you approached for that? Who approached you to be part of well, that's the just, show? Well, that's just a management thing. But okay. People tend to ask me this question yeah. even in Holland. They go like, do you guys know each other? No, we don't. Um, but um, I have had this really fun encounter with him, uh, which he doesn't probably know, but I do, because I saw him and we're like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> but I was playing at Montreux Festival, uh, Montreux Jazz in Switzerland, and um, uh, George Benson was playing after my show and we were just checking him out from from the backstage and there was Quint Jones just sitting there and we made this little <laughs> little photo with him in the background just to be he able doesn't to prove know about it to, this. to my friends you know <laughs> he was there but he doesn't know you no. need to show him that when, you, when you're Hopefully, performing with him I'll have just, time to do that yeah, yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been amazing having you on the show. Um, but I would love to t- you to teach me how to say goodbye in Dutch. Goodbye. So I want to say um, goodbye. I want to start to educate myself with different yes, languages. Yes, yes. Well, oh, goodbye. Well, it sounds a bit official if you'd say well, well, goodbye. Thank you very much and speak soon. Heel erg bedankt. Tot snel. <laughs> I'm going to struggle with that. <laughs> right, one more time. Wait, can I make this easier? Thank you. Dank je. Dank je. Tot snel. Tot snel. That means uh, tot, uh, I bet until just, soon. Speak soon. I bet I've just sworn in Dutch or something. No, and that's going to be on the internet. <laughs> Swearing in Dutch involves a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. You're I so really welcome. appreciate it. And good luck with it all. And good luck with everything else. Thank you. Thank you. There we 